My destination is Jesus. I met him. He shook hands with me. He welcomed me to the brotherhood. He's appeared to me and spoken to me many times. But how many of you are really destined for Jesus to be welcomed into his kingdom? Many of you claim it and want it, but there's a few things that you need to know. For one thing, you will be judged by your deeds, not by what someone did to you and you responded back to them. If somebody does something wrong to you, say somebody takes something away from you and then you take something away from them. Well, the person that took it away from you, they're gonna be judged for what they did. But if you take something back away from them, then you're gonna be judged for what you did. So one sin does not justify another sin. Everybody will be judged for the sins that they do, not by the sins that somebody else did to them. And so be sure your sins will find you out. You're not gonna be able to hide it from the Lord when you're over there all your sins will be, will be revealed. And will your sins go in before you or will they come in after you? So you really want your sins to be forgiven. You wanna be cleansed. You wanna be living after the spirit before you die. But after you die, your sins are gonna come in after you and they won't be under the blood. They won't be forgiven. And so you're gonna be judged by those sins because they're gonna follow you over there into the spirit world. So here's a few principles. Why did they say their God was their belly? Because it controlled them. How many people are controlled by their belly today? There's so many overweight people and obese people. I know today it's a lot harder because of the food we have out there and it's so readily available and it's so habit forming. But your belly is your God when your food controls you, just like if smoking controls you or, or any lust in the flesh, if you're controlled by it, you're not getting what you need, but you're getting what you lust after, then it is your God because a God is what controls you. You might claim that the heavenly father is your God and Jesus is your savior, but you're not being controlled by them. You're being controlled by the flesh. So that's your God. Why do they say, let him that is ignorant be ignorant still? Because most people, it's not that you're ignorant in the sense that you don't know. You're ignorant because you don't want to know. It's willful ignorance. You don't want to know the will of God. You don't want to realize that you're in sin and contrary to God. So therefore, let them that be ignorant be ignorant still. It's up to them. You have a choice. It's not given for them to know the mystery of God. Philip said, Lord, how will you reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Well, Jesus reveals himself to those that love him, and he comes to us in the spirit. They once knew him after the flesh, but now they don't know him after the flesh. We can only know him by the spirit. And not many will, be, will know the mystery of God because the natural man cannot know the things of the mystery of God. Why did Jesus forbid Paul to going into Asia? Jesus sends people where he wants them to go, to whom he wants them to go to. Some people's hearts will love God and God knows those hearts and he gives them a chance. Many are called, but few are chosen. So Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. At that time, the Lord didn't want them to go to Asia. For whatever reason, the Holy Spirit kept them from preaching the word in Asia. And Paul said this, and now I am bound by the spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. Everything's by the spirit. The Lord leads us by the spirit not by the dead letter Bible, not by the history book. The Bible doesn't speak to us. Jesus Christ, the resurrected living Jesus Christ, who has a living voice, leads us and guides us by the Holy Spirit. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Well, Paul had been beaten and stoned and imprisoned and treated so badly by all the people that hated the word, the truth, 
And it was kind of hard for him probably to get up and preach again, but Jesus told him he had many people in this city. Well, why didn't he send him to Asia? But he sent him to uh, this city that he told him to go to because he knew there were people there that loved him that would believe. There shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Well, how could they deceive the very elect? Well, they took the writings of God's people and they compiled it into an idol and called it the word of God. That's how everybody's deceived today until Jesus sent forth a little hillbilly named Harlan Hay and told him the Bible is an idol. Then nobody would know. Everybody was deceived and most of them want to be today. But now you have a chance to know the truth. The wicked will be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, when Jesus comes, he's coming with a sword and he's coming with light. When Satan, sometimes Satan would torment me at night and saying, you can't preach this. These big preachers have too much power and they're not going to, you know, stand for you telling this. They're going to get you. And I'd be praying to the Lord and the Lord showed up. And that darkness suddenly just fled away. And Jesus walked up behind me and the light came with him. I saw the devil walking away with his back to me because when the light shows up, darkness flees. And so he, the Lord shall destroy him with the brightness of his coming. And think about this. All you that think you're so, uh, you think you're under the blood of Jesus and you're forgiven and you're going to heaven. Your destination is Jesus. What are the top 10 resolutions? Exercise more. Why are you lazy? Lose weight. Why are you overweight? Get organized. Are you unorganized? That's all fleshly things. Learn a new skill or hobby. Why? For pastime? Why don't you spend some time praying and seeking the Lord? Live life to the fullest. What are you talking about? Living fleshly life to the fullest? Save more money or spend less money. You know, money, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. Why? Because it buys the things of the flesh. Quit smoking. Well, why are you smoking in the first place? Spend more time with your family and friends. Travel more. Read more. Why aren't any of the 10 top resolutions? Spend more time with God, seeking for God, finding out what God's will is for your life, giving up the flesh, living after the spirit. Why do people have so many fleshly problems? The other day I was driving. And this song came to my heart. I just started singing it in, in my heart and my subconscious. The Holy Spirit brought it to me. And it's called Not Afraid to Die. And in his arms, I'm not afraid. When I close my eyes in death, fold my hands across my breast. Sing for me a pretty song while I take my journey home. When I cross that silent sea where the home lights beckon me, I'll feel no pain. I'll fear, I'll fear no harm safe, secure in Jesus' arms, not afraid to bid this world goodbye, not afraid to close my eyes and die. For his spirit, I have prayed in his arms. I'm not afraid. How many of you can really say that, that you're not afraid for your final destiny to Jesus? You need to examine your heart and your life and quit seeking after the things of the flesh. You live in the flesh, but you don't use this liberty for an occasion for the flesh. If you live after the flesh, I don't care if you believe the truth, but if you don't live the truth, if you just believe the truth, but you're not walking and talking with Jesus, you're not praying to, for the will of God in your life, and you're doing your own will, justifying yourself because you believe certain things, well, then you're not going to make it. It's just that simple, children. You have to really walk and talk with Jesus and do his will after the spirit and not after the flesh. I know it's not easy. We live in a very fleshly world today that distracts you after the flesh, but it's crucial because your eternal soul lies in the balances. While kneeling in my life of disappointment, lying within my heart I could not see. The pieces of my life were scattered about me. Jesus' hands and love reached down for me. 
me And I love him because he understands me Oh, I love him because he sets me free I love him because of Mount Calvary And I love him most because he first loved me Now I have the strength to serve the Savior his spirit came and set this captive free. Storms of life can never wound the feeling. By faith in God, his voice is guiding me. And I love him because he understands me. Oh, I love him because he set me free. Oh, I love him because of my cow. Because he first loved me. Yes, I love him most because he first loved me.